And so I got to the battles and and like there was like another curly haired girl in the battles. She was like taller than me, had like very long Is it like there's room for one curly haired girl? I think that's kind of what it was. That's also, so this is the TV portion of it, by the way. They hashtagged it the curly battle. And yeah, it was yeah. just you versus her? It was just me versus her. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my Welcome back to another episode of the Immigrant Section. It's your boy Abbas Wap saying thank you for tuning in. I'll be honest, we just started this podcast and uh, first three minutes weren't even recording audio. So this is weird for the guests because uh, <laughs> they're like, we're just going to redo it. But here we are Listen, with me gonna- in the studio today for the first time, even though we just did this three minutes ago. Singer, songwriter, actress, Malika. Hello. I'm so happy to be here, Abbas. Thank you for having me. It is a, an honor. An Should we just honor. redo the banter exactly? I was gonna as we say, like, it? we can just retell the jokes. Nobody will know the difference. <laughs> like, <laughs> it'll sound natural. Magic sounds natural the second time when you try to redo it, right? Magic. Magic. But yeah, no, we were saying how Maleka, this is probably the most um, butchered name ever. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel I mean I feel like being an immigrant, your name gets butchered all the time. And then you know what I really sit and I think about it to myself. I'm like, okay, how fair is it? Is it fair to expect people to pronounce your name properly? Like I don't I don't know. Like I don't know. Yeah, I'm not saying that like, oh, like just cut people some slack. But then I'm like, should we cut people some slack? Because like imagine, I don't know, somebody from Please excuse me, but like somebody from like a because I, I don't know how, pe- how people Kazakhstan <laughs> or or like the Congo or like Nigeria where they have or South Africa where they have the and the and the, the clicks and their name and their name is like it's an ex when it's written it's an exclamation mark yeah and it's like is it fair of them to expect us to pronounce it perfectly the first time you know what I mean it's the same thing I get it but still like think about it Megan is much closer to Malaika than. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good. Like, like you know what I mean? Oh my like, god, that was so right? horrible. Actually, why did I say that? No, you, I mean you were making a good point, but whatever, it's all good. Like I've been getting my name butchered all my life. What's I, the worst one you've gotten? I remember when I first moved. Did, were you born in? You're Egyptian, right? I'm Egyptian. Yes. So were you born there? Um, I was born in the States, and yeah. then uh, we moved to Egypt like right away because I don't know. We'll get to the papers. Oh, I mean, get I, don't, I don't think it was actually one of those. Oh, it like, was one of those. Listen, you're like the, the 10th person. I was, I'm like the 10th person. <laughs> Every, that's, this is a go-to playbook. We come pregnant, we have the child here, we have the baby, and, and we go back. We fly to, to Egypt again. Every Lebanese person I know did that for Canada. And Are then they serious? go back, they grow up either in Saudi in a complex oh or uh, Lebanon. And then they come back like eighteen with like, with all of their call, and then they're yeah, like, and then then, then they get OSAP, the and they get OSAP right yeah, away. Exactly. Right? Fuck, that's so funny. Sorry, am I allowed to swear in this? Part? No, a hundred percent. I encourage it. I, that's why I usually open things up with fuck, fuck, swear, swear, fuck. Fuck, fuck, swear, swear. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so you were born in the states. And born. then you just kind of grew up in... Yeah, I grew up... Like, my, like I don't even consider... Like, I, I've been to the States a couple of times since. But, like, I'm fully Egyptian. Like, I grew up in Egypt uh, till I was 16. And then I moved to Canada. And, I mean, I always kind of, like, identified with North American culture very much as a kid. Yeah. I just, like, pointed at the mic. That's right. Um, I Malika. Was, Mal- <laughs> Malika, behave yourself. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then when I... Actually, when, when my mom told me, it's like, okay, we're finally, like, moving. I was like... No, I'm not leaving. You know, it's like when you're a 16 year old kid, like this is everything I know. And I thought I'd be excited. When you say finally, did she always kind of hint that like you guys are going to be doing like college and stuff like back in North America? When you say finally, I I always envisioned myself living outside. I don't think I don't think that I thought that it was going to be that soon. Huh. But you know? but that, is that soon though? You so you, well, you sixteen not. years. No, no, we always. I mean, I find that that we always say we want something and then like we postpone getting it. You know, I mean, it depends on the thing, but like we we are often afraid of getting what we actually want because then, then it's like, then it's like it's your responsibility to like maintain that thing or to really like build on the thing that you that you get. Whereas like, there's a song by by AJR called Next Up Forever. It's I thought you were gonna say by Amr Diab. No, I <laughs> I I have some things to say about Amr Diab. Have you actually. met him? No, I wish. <laughs> That's no, ever. No, I don't even know. <laughs> that guy looks like he's thirty for the rest of the time. He's he's, he's gonna out out age all of it. Like he's gonna just outlive all of us. His it's lips amazing. are just kind of like this. I know. <laughs> you know I, but actually, here's the thing. Like I look at him and I'm like, he's actually done okay. Like I I don't look at him and I'm like, that guy's had work done. 
You know, I look at him and I'm like, I, th- I feel it's like it's like really high show. quality plastic yeah, surgery. Like that guy's paid but for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, top of the line like stuff. Like if I were to ever get plastic surgery, I'll call. I'm gonna yeah, up. Who's your guy? Like, who's your guy? Yeah. <laughs> well, who'd you, who would you boo? Who would you go under the knife with? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, his wife is like 13. Is she? She's like 37, but but she no, looks he's like, like 60. I saw a picture of his tour dates, and it's like he's like you know when the someone um, poses and then they put the dates to the right. Yes. And he's like. Yeah. And I'm like, this guy's <laughs> fucking 60. He looks, he looks crazy. Great. Yeah. I wonder, it's like, okay, so like, I wonder, is he doing that? I, I mean. I mean, it's show business though, right? That's, that's what I'm going to say. Is he doing that for his career or is he doing that because he wants to remain fuckable? Like, both. Which, do you think is both? Both. It has, those are all but one it, but thing though. But at 60, though. I mean, I don't know like what men's like sexual um, desires, how they Probably develop get, past yeah. 50. Oh. But like at 60s, he's still thinking like, oh, I want to be fuckable. It's like He's women. got like a whole Viagra doctor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those are surgery his, doctor. Just like plastic on call. surgery. Yeah, yeah, he exactly. He travels with yeah. him just like pumping him full of... <laughs> My lip is a uh, dream. Uh, my lip is uh, like uh, it's deflating, it's doctor. Deflating. It's deflating. <laughs> and so is my it. wiener. You know, yeah, it's so the, is both like, the doctors like, come. <laughs> yes, yeah, sh- <laughs> one injection up here. One injection. <laughs> Dude, but Amr Diab is a beast, though. Oh my god. Okay, Amr Diab has, the, in my opinion, for, for those who don't know, this is like the goat. This is like the. How would you compare him Amr to like? Diab a, a, is like. Uh, I wouldn't say Michael Jackson for a second, but he's not like a big dance. No. He's like the go-to Egyptian megastar singer yeah, for like, like a mega, three decades. Mega star. Yeah, like he, he's just he's like mobotic, but singing. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's just like the top grossing like everything, and like his concert tickets are so expensive. And and all the Middle East, not just Egypt too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Every everybody loves him. I, I you're right. I can't think of like an equivalent. Um, in the in North America, but he, uh, I think that he arguably has the. It's like a John Mayer, like an old yes, John, okay, Mayer, John Mayer. Right? He doesn't really yeah, play yeah, the yeah. guitar, but he's that level. Like, but, but he's there's a, a lot of guitar in his songs. Like you would think from listening to his songs that he plays guitar, but he doesn't. He doesn't. No, no. he just gets plastic surgery. No, but yeah. he just gets. Blood. That's his God instrument. <laughs> if you're watching, I'm a dab. Listen, you. if you want to just pick one thing and do it very, very well. I know. He does right. plastic surgery very well. <laughs> <laughs> I think he has the best melodies in any, like in any, any Middle Eastern star or musician that I've ever heard. Like the melodies in his songs, like. Like it's just so. Yo, oh, you were on The Voice, MVC's of yes, Voice. Yes, MVC's of oh, Voice. Okay, okay, if okay. You okay. Watch I, I want to get there, but uh, just give me real quick, kind of like so. Sixteen, you kind of grew up there, and you went to America. Or you came to Canada. No, no, or we what came happened? to Canada right away. Straight to Toronto. Straight. Uh, no, we went to Ottawa first. <laughs> God, and you got out of there real quick, huh? <laughs> I wish we did. We were there for like six years. Um, we got there and I was like, man, I was expecting friggin' like, you know, gold, gold streets and, you know, I don't know. This is like, what they say about Ottawa outside of the country. I just gold didn't. Gold street didn't, everywhere. <laughs> gold street. Dab. Gold, gold coffee, gold everything. Everything. Um, I, I thought it would be like... You know, like like they see on the TV, like North America, like there's like clubs and celebrities, and you know, as soon as I, because I was a musician, you thought it was, I was LA. Like, I thought uh-huh. I was LA. I thought I was gonna get there, and as soon as I exit the airport, there's gonna be somebody just like like throwing money at me and like record Red label carpet. deals, and like yeah, it's like please sign to Universal. I, that's what I thought it was gonna be, and I get there, and I'm like, why is everything closed at six a six p.m. Like six p.m. Everything's closed. It's yeah. nuts. It's like, I'm sorry, do people like not exist after six o'clock at night? It's crazy. And then Sunday, Sunday is like the weekend, right? Here. And so I was looking at this for my mom and I were looking at this. It's actually God's she's day. Like, it's the it's, Lord's day. I'm so sorry. Malika. Malika, please you respect realize the word of Jesus Christ. How ignorant you look like right now. I actually look a little ignorant. I was ignorant. <laughs> We're all ignorant. I just when we get went here. to. By the way, shout out to Ottawa for everyone coming out. That people, I did a little tour, and people came out in Ottawa like nowhere else. Because I, I think Ottawa, they are desperate for motherfuckers they to are, come and entertain yes. them. Yes, and and like I think they love comedy there. Oh, too. they like, love a lot, it. A lot, a lot. I was in Montreal doing shows, and they're talking about Ottawa. They're like, oh, Ottawa. Ottawa audiences love when you shit on them. <laughs> they okay. just, they, yeah. Relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I went I mean, there, I, I started talking shit. Bit. Yeah. And it was not that as receptive as I would have thought. Because I was like, mm. oh, I, I was told you, you guys would have liked this. 
<laughs> and they're like, please leave our city. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just quiet. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I bombed. Um, but six was, years. Six years. Did you go? Did you go to Carlton or? I did go to Carlton. Of course. What oh else is God. there to do? I mean, there's U of Ottawa for the smart people, but I went to Carlton. Um, we don't talk about that. <laughs> Man, I didn't even know that it had the nickname of Last Chance U until after I graduated. What does that even mean? It's like it's I've like you don't you don't get accepted anywhere else, but Carlton will take you. Oh yeah. Yeah, but like here's the thing. That was not my experience. I had an amazing experience. I thought it was an amazing university. This is what other people have told me, okay? I think it's a great university. I got a great education, best four years of my life. Like I, I would not have been the music the musician I am today if I hadn't gone there. So I feel so good about it. So people gotta stop hating on Carlton, okay? Stop did, it. Did you study music? I did, yes. What's yes. what's a music undergrad like? Um, so it depends on what you study. Uh, is it like a money grab or is it actually like it actually equips you? You know what Some I mean? of them are. I feel I feel like the the music program itself was was kind of young when I went there. So there are like all, like if I were to look back now, I'd be like, okay, I really wish they would have had a course on this, on this, and this. Um, but it, it it did equip me to uh, have more agents, more autonomy over the art that I create. Because when I went there, I was just like, I'm I'm just a singer. You know, I never really envisioned myself as a songwriter. And then when I went there, I learned, like people think that music theory limits you and obviously it depends on the person. But for me, like actually learning the theory of music and the history of music and the different genres of music and where they came from and 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 what this genre is based on historically, like what happened in history that ended up creating this music genre. All that to me, like it enriched my musical experience. Like it made me more able to, to express myself artistically and to actually write songs. Like writing songs is the most empowering thing you can do as a musician, I think. Like if you're just performing other people's music, yeah, that's, you can do it better than anybody else. But, but, you're not gonna be. You're not gonna be fully it's not autonomous. Full expression. Yeah, exactly. Complete and, expression. And I mean, like, uh, I, I love, I love singing covers. I love singing other people's music. I, I love, I love collabing and like having a song that's like half written by me, half written by somebody else. Like, I find that we need people who are mouthpieces, you know, musically and you know, in other artistic. Uh, uh, ways, uh, but even just even just for you for yourself, like if you even if you write stuff, you never release it. Like it, it's it's so. It, it just, it fulfills you so much. Like, there was a time where I, I didn't write for, like, like a year uh, during COVID. Like, you know, a lot of people, man, I was so mad. Like, people, like, you know, posting things like, oh, like, you know, this quarantine has made me so creative. And I'm just like, how? Yeah, yeah, yeah This yeah, has right? made me not want to write anything. And I felt like I was literally, this is something that I, that By I. By the way, it's not recording shit. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> Imagine. Oh <my> Imagine. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going on a total rant right no, now. No, no, don't sweat it. Because I remember. Back in the day, I, I when I came to Canada, I came at six from Sudan. Oh my god! I came when I was six, and when so I came, you're like like more Canadian than anything you said. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I even went back to Sudan. I realized it. You looking, for oh, yeah, Hortons, like, <laughs> looking for Tim Hortons. Looking for Tim Hortons. Where's, where's the sorry, double, double? double? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like when I came, Tupac just died. I came in '97. Tupac oh. died in '96, and the neighborhood I was in, Tupac was like was it was like God. Jesus. Was yeah, God? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I grew up on Tupac like crazy, That's and I cool. remember what as I grew up, I'm like. Learning about Tupac, learning that he, you know, he had this allegation that took him to prison for like nine months or whatever, and thinking like, oh man, if you're Tupac, you're gonna write six albums in prison. And then I finally watched this interview with him. He's like, you would think that, but yeah. it destroys your creativity. It the does? only thing he wrote was "Dear Mama," which was a was a, a, a letter, letter for her, and he made it a song. That's actually really profound. But like, he's like, it. it kills your soul it does and that's exactly similar to how i felt with covid where it's like as a comedian i couldn't write any comedy because knowing that i can't go up on stage to work it out or hash that's it right. out There's i can't write well, i can't it. i have no drive to yes. write there's people people oh you write so much mm -hmm. you have so much time no you gotta live mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. can can i like expand on what you just said Cause please that, that's, i mean that's why i that's stopped so, i was like now no, it's your that's, turn that's so that's so <laughs> no but true. we're not recording though so just oh, okay, no i'm kidding that's fine i'll just go home um <laughs> We, we like I, I find it very almost um, it, it does a, dis, a disjustice to, to us when somebody's like, oh, you should write like, oh, like I, I write just I, I only need to like look inward to write and I, I only need to whatever. But you in order for in order for you to want to create, there has to be somebody there to receive the creation you know like they talk about about like um about the muse you know like oh the muse comes to you and we all like we put this muse on a pedestal right we talk about the muse you know and then the muse needs us too 
You know what I mean? Because I feel like you had a class in Carlton called the Muse. No, we didn't. I didn't. I just, I just, I, I would hear the songwriter, the songwriting teacher talk about the Muse and like da da da. And then he was talking about it like it's like it's freaking some angel that like yeah, comes yeah, yeah. to you and it's like they come. yeah, exactly. And it's like the actually Muse, think Jibreel. about it. Jibril, yeah, they <laughs> talk about it like it's Jibril. But even yo, even Jibril. I, actually, I shouldn't, I shouldn't go there. I'm not gonna go there. But like, <laughs> oh, I, I'm not damn. gonna go there. But what I'll, talk, I'll talk about the Muse. I'll talk about the Muse. <laughs> the Muse needs you as much as you need it because without you. It, the muse's idea will never come to fruition. I, I it, like it's a two way street. It's a two way street. You need it, but it needs you too. You know, and and so the, and it, that that to tie it back to what you were saying, like if if nobody's there to to receive to to see your art, then it's going to be really hard to create it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's that's exactly why I started making online content like crazy. Yeah. During COVID. Yeah. Just because I was like shift Don't. to a thing where at least there is a path it, exactly. for it to be acknowledged yes, yes, right yes. like if it if it can't be acknowledged then it's like what the f- <laughs> like, exactly like why am i doing it i have and all like, these jokes these books i wrote these books of jokes exactly. during lockdown and like, like no no one's nobody's like that. laughing at them yeah, no and one. you know people can like say like oh that's just being insecure and it's like yo that's that's what artists are we're fucking insecure exactly. and we want you to tell us that we're good at what I, we do okay I, I make jokes so you laugh and you sing exactly. so people go, damn, you can sing, you know? Please, please make me feel like I'm enough as a human being by telling me my art is good. <laughs> and hence the inception of this podcast. Watch this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at me. They're watching us. They're watching us. Um, but okay, so Carlton, <laughs> then you moved to Toronto. Or I had to, actually, real quick, what's the difference between just grabbing a piece of like pencil paper, writing a song versus mm-hmm. taking the, the songwriting course? Like what? Like what? Like, do they guys? Do they teach about like Paul McCartney and being like him totally, being like God yeah, level? Yeah. Uh, like, who, who what is, is it? Who is God? I think Bob Dylan in, in university was was God. like God level. He was God level, even yeah. though I never listened to Bob Dylan as a kid. Sorry, I but never. But there's just did. every like every class has a unit not, on not Bob every, Dylan. Yeah, every every class would would like you know put somebody on a pedestal. Like it would depend. Like a lot of Canadian artists like. Patrick Watson and Sarah McLaughlin, for example, were Sarah like McLaughlin. really yeah. She yeah. she's the shit man. Her I song remember Angel. her. Patrick, I even heard the first guy. Yeah, I only know like one song by him. Like yeah. he's he's awesome, I'm sure, but I just you know we don't listen to. Pat, Canadian, if you're watching, no you know, beef, bro. Sorry, I, just, yeah, I never Pat, heard of you, bro. Please, I never yeah, heard of you. Let's co-write. Like I yeah. think you're amazing. <laughs> I mean, as far as the one song that yeah. I've heard, um, <clears throat> it they teach you about like song structure. They teach you about um, obviously like influences uh, are a big thing because you can you can write a song on paper with like a hip hop kind of like beat playing in your head you know or you can write it with like a little bit of a guitar like playing in your head and this is like assuming you can't play an instrument at all you know or you can you can write a song that's that's like just verse chorus verse chorus verse chorus verse chorus or you can write a song that has a verse and then a pre-chorus and then a chorus and then a bridge and then it's a pre-chorus it's like the it's um uh okay so do you know that song oh god the Katy perry song do you ever feel like a plastic bag yeah yeah, yeah. so so that 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 part that's the verse and then the pre-chorus is like the part that like ramps you up for the course the part where it goes you just gotta ignite the light to let it uh, shine it's like okay it's coming uh, it's coming and gotcha. then baby you're a firework that's like the course like all right we've arrived ladies and gentlemen oh okay yeah. okay okay is it is is music now like having taken these classes at all is it all the same like writing structure i feel like take like britney spears katie perry all these people and it's just like add 10 years and it's the same kind of structure. I feel like I'm hearing the same song, like the same like Christina Aguilera song, then Britney Spears. You're saying like Gaga. songs back then were the same as they are now Just in terms like, of structure? Oh. All the what they're saying is different, but it mm-hmm. feels like the same. Sometimes yeah. I just feel like I heard the song thirty times before, yeah, and I never this, heard they, it. They're, they're going by formula, like yeah. they they're they're writing a verse and then a chorus. Who, by the verse. way, Drake has got that formula locked in. You know, Drake. I, I honestly think, and and my my partner would like kill me for this. I think Drake was a freaking pioneer. I think Drake is underrated in terms of the influence that he had on all of the music that was written post Drake. Everybody's trying to sound like Drake, and it doesn't matter if you like his music or you don't like his music. That's a fact. Everybody for a long, long time was trying to sound like Drake, and you can't take that away from him. Oh yeah, I mean Jack Harlow is like young white Drake. Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Jack Harlow's like he's got forty million monthly listens on Spotify. He's the new hot shit. Nail well, tech. Shit, I, 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 I don't feel know like any I would, of the words. I feel like I would get like 
initially I'd be like, oh, that's annoying. But then I would listen. I'd be like, okay, I actually kind of dig it's, this. It's it's Drake. It's it's, yeah, it's yeah. Drake cadence everything. Yeah. What is it? What did Drake nail? You know what I mean? It's like he it's like he figured out the equation. I don't know. I think okay. You know what I think it is. Billboard okay. topping tracks. I'm I'm spitballing. Okay. Please. Because like everybody's. Is this about Jibreel? This is not about Jibreel. This okay. is Jibreel is gonna remain the untouched. <laughs> Can you leave the angels be? <laughs> leave the angels be, please. Hey, Ramadan, Let us Jesus exactly. Christ. That's true. It is. Yeah. So um, I uh, what was I saying? Oh gosh, we were talking about Drake. Yeah. Right. We were talking about like. Yeah, right. wh- so what is it with that? Yeah. Uh, the, how did he nail that formula? You know what? I, every yeah. time Drake brings like, it's not his music doesn't have good longevity. I, I I'm a big fan of Drake, totally. but like uh, what's it called? Uh, Certified Le- uh, Lover Boy, uh-huh. his most recent album. Uh-huh. I haven't heard it yet. It's like they're sick, and then it's gone. Mm. Whereas, like, I always notice with Kanye West, his songs have like yeah, man. hanging. They have I still holding listen power. To cl- every time Click comes on to my oh uh, Click, my, I, click. click. We started. Click. We yeah, Mercy, na 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 na. Yes, Mercy. That oh my and God, Click. Mercy, so good. The whole tour, we're starting. Yes. Like my buddy Mo is Egyptian comedian. Mo Smail. I he love comes, Mo. Oh you my know God, Mo? I freaking love Mo. He's he, so funny. He comes on to Mercy always. He's like Mercy, oh thirteen God. seconds in. Yeah. Duh. Oh my god! Duh. That's, a, that's but yeah. What did Drake nail? Like it's like he figured it out. I, huh? I think because a lot of a lot of people who are rapper or R and B like singers, they they come in with this like, like e- even with Mercy or like Click, it's like they come in kind of thug. It's like mm, I'm here, but then Drake's coming and kind of like, oh baby, like you know, you're you're my woman, you're my whatever. I love you forever, look, but I'm so damaged. But you know, commitment's really hard for me. But I really want to try with you. It's like he's coming in from that angle. And Sensitivity. Like, he's Every the woman first, wants to hear that. Yeah. You know? He's like the first like uh, mainstream rapper who was like, I'll be vulnerable on that's this track right. and then do bars too. That's right. I think that's I think that's what huh. what made him different. I think because I think like with with rap, like I love rap, but a lot of maybe like I feel like rap is a is a predominantly like male oh, yeah. listen to genre. But like Drake came in, he's like, here's the thing that all the guys listen to, but here's a little something for the ladies. Yeah, right? and so like, he uh, like expand. He really was like this like chameleon musically for everybody to enjoy. What do you think about Kanye West? I fucking love Kanye. I'm sorry. I mean, listen, I have not seen any of his interviews. I don't know what he's saying. Did or, you watch uh, or Genius how. on? Netflix? I didn't watch Genius, but so I want good. to. So oh man, gotta watch it. I, I get scared of saying I like Kanye because I don't know. He was like he did, said some racist shit. I don't know, man. He says everything. He says that's the thing. He's just he's just trying to start shit. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm not mad at him. You know, I mean, again, I don't know what he said, but his music. Timeless. Timeless. Exactly. His music Timeless. has so much. His the holding power on his music. That's right. Is so much better than Drake's. I'm gonna be getting down Drake to Mercy at, at seventy-five. Da, 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 da. Yeah, exactly. And that melody is a bit. Is that Mercy or Click? I, I uh, can't that's forget. Click. That's Click. Yeah. My bad. Da, ba, da, ba, click. Yeah. Click. Yeah. Okay, so you. Who are your like? Who are you? I'm so curious. Tupac. Like, who are you? Tupac. Okay, when okay. I came, mm-hmm. like. Till this day, the funny thing is I'm now older than Tupac when he died. That's and crazy. I'm still driving, listening to Only God Can Judge Me, mm-hmm. having everything memorized. Yeah. And just, I I always looked, you know, when you grow up with lyrics, mm-hmm. they mean, that's the beautiful thing about music is like, it's so subjective. Yeah. A line could mean anything to anybody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's like you attribute it to mean A, B, and C for yourself. And as you grow up, you always remember it meaning A, B, and C. And then I'm like, man, at one point I'm like, man, this guy literally is like younger than me. I'm mm-hmm. still driving being like, yo, Tupac. But it's like, mm-hmm. this is a younger guy. He's a, he's he, this kid, is a track at 23 yeah, that yeah, I'm yeah. like, they got me trapped in this prison of seclusion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Tupac, tell us. You know what I mean? I'm like older than the guy. But like grew up on Tupac like crazy, um, super like heavy rap influence. Just how I grew up. It was like yeah. when you come, what's funny, when you come – from Africa and you're Sudani uh, or whatever other African, you kind of ha- start fitting the mold of the African-American. You have to. Yeah. Because everyone looks at you like as a black kid. You're not really an African kid anymore. Yeah. So it's like I get here and I'm like, oh, we listen to rap? Okay, we okay, listen to we, rap. We, 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 yeah, I, we do I rap. Like I love rap. I love rap. Yeah, yeah. I love rap. And so I loved rap. So yeah. it's like, and forever would listen to Tupac and I was like, fuck Biggie. And then <laughs> one, fuck Biggie. Wait, wait. Because I was like, they had like a beef. Big- they did? Dude, that's one time my buddy Tariq set me aside in like grade eight. And he was like, bro. You can't like both? No, no. He told me. He was like, this was like in my head. I was like, oh, we can only like one. He's like, 
Yeah, bro. That East Coast, West Coast shit was bullshit. They're both crazy rappers. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, fuck, he's right. Then I got into Biggie and I was like, oh, Biggie's a better rapper than Tupac. <laughs> Biggie's a, I'm sure you, Tupac was like a poet. That, yeah. No, no, Tupac was a poet. Mm. And Biggie, Biggie was, was like a, a rapper. Mm, yeah, okay, I feel Biggie, that. I feel yeah, Biggie was a better rapper than Tupac. There's no comparison. But Tupac was like a visionary, philosopher, yeah. poet. Like imagine what he, he was doing that Drake nowadays. thing back then. Yes. That vulnerability thing That's back then. That's actually magical, man. Like if you imagine like if he if nothing had happened and he had like lived on, you know, how his artery how artistry would have developed. Like that would have been He would have been uh less influential to the zeitgeist of music mm. than he than he would have been had he died the way he did. I think you're right. Because when he died and when Biggie died, it makes them martyrs. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And they and, and kind we put of them become, on a pedestal. Oh, exactly. like Jesus. I wonder, you know what I asked? I asked he would have just been this like Jay Z, just like rich and like yeah, exactly. doing an album every now and then, but like he's a billionaire. Exactly. I, I mean, Tupac, good, I would have seen. Jay Z, you know, like that's kind of what we all aspire to. I'm some a huge Jay Z right? fan. Yeah. yeah, man. Have you, um, have you ever thought about. Like think of anybody that you idolize, like Tupac or like your your most influential like comedian or something. Like because we put them on such a pedestal, we're like, oh my god, they're amazing. They can do no wrong. And I think about the people that I respect, for example, like Alicia Keys or like you know Christina. I'm like, if I were to get to know them, what would be a characteristic of theirs that I wouldn't like about them? You know, like I try to humanize the them regular in my people. Mind. The regular people. My girl loves their uh, Swiss beats and Alicia Keys on Instagram. She's Ooh. like, look, they have the best relationship. They have like their Instagram Wait, presence. Wait, Alicia is- and Swiss Beats are together. Are together. Shut the fuck up. They have kids up. and everything, apparently. Oh, okay. Shoot. I'm, yeah, and their, their kids and their, must be sexy. And their Instagram. I don't even know, but like their Instagram is like, I got her a hundred flat. I don't know what the hell it is. It's just. Man, some I don't shit. think that's I, a very sustainable habit. To, I don't like, know. Give I don't know. But I'm just like. Flowers. I don't know what whatever it is. It's like this. Ah, fuck all that shit. But like. The, like, the what, Instagram what, lives, you know. I, I but I'm wonder, a huge fan of Alicia Keys, though. She's she's really her, ever her since that song. Very, which, na, 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 na. Da, da, some people oh, want, want it all. all. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, song. Yeah, we were, I was so I out of tune with you. Wanna, na, na, na. That song is everything. It's yeah, I like remember just being cover. like, yeah, the yeah. song. Like I would like be in the car <laughs> alone, <laughs> crank that <laughs> I hope shit nobody up. Sees me. Someone, yeah, they. I drive by friends. I <laughs> hey, turn it to hey, only hey, God you're, can you're, judge you're, me. You're draking. Yeah, okay? exactly. You're just draking. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's what I'm doing. Okay. I got a lot of problems in my life. <laughs> That's his new sing? track. No, I don't. But it doesn't sound like, like you, I could. Yeah, it, it sounds like everything is voice. <laughs> Forget about me. Back to you, okay? <laughs> so, how did you? Were you singing in Egypt when, like? Yeah, not professionally. I mean, as as professional as a sixteen year old could be. So, by the time I had moved, I thankfully done quite a bit. So, I traveled. Uh, my my school gave us a lot of um, opportunities to to explore music abroad. So there was like music competitions and stuff that I got to be a part of that I traveled and 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 some I won, some I came second place. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, what even is that? Music competition? Competition. Oh, music competition. Yes, gotcha. Yes. Okay, um, okay. So I got to go to like Italy and, and Germany and uh, Greece. Like it was so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And so I was singing in Egypt, but you know, as, as much as I could as, as a teenager. And then I came here and only then did I start taking it like super seriously and um and when i decided to like study and stuff like my mom was trying so hard my mom's been really awesome like throughout my career like she's trying always to to support me and stuff but like before i told her like you know before i went to university she was like okay well listen you're gonna do whatever you want but i'm gonna get you a career coach who's gonna like sit with you and like see if like music is like the right thing or whatever and she paid i haven't even heard of a career coach before me was neither. she a muscly lady like an addition no, lady no she was she was she was white oh, okay okay good she was like <laughs> engineering mohandis you seem like you could be a very good doctor doctor very good yeah. doctor or architect yes. you pick and a lot of the schools they like when you can sing they, mm. they like the you do the art on the side on this the is, side you could do minor you, yeah, yeah. minor uh, music major uh, medicine major medicine <laughs> exactly <laughs> but of course major medicine <laughs> it would have been so obvious if but did you meet with this lady I did meet th- with this lady what'd she say uh, I, she did all these. It was actually fun sitting with her because, like, it's all about me because she's like doing all these personality tests and shit. And so, um, like career therapy. Yeah, like a th- career therapy. And like, I don't remember how many sessions it was, like five sessions or something. And then by the end of it, she just went to mom. She's like, "Yeah, just let her study music." That's hilarious. Yeah, it's so funny. Your mom's like, like, "Awesome, here's a thousand dollars." Literally, it was like eight hundred dollars later. <laughs> my mom was like, "Okay, thank you for telling me what I already yeah, fucking exactly. knew." Fuck! What a waste of money. <laughs> Everyone was just so mad. Yeah, and you know what? Like. Like, I, I do I paid think you eight hundred to push her into medicine. Exactly, just like make her become a lawyer. My mom always thought I'd be a lawyer. Lawyer, yeah. it's funny. You know what it is? You know what it is? When they're like, for sure she does. 
She's not. She won't become an engineer, or doctor. She's not mm. that. But lawyer, like it's still clinging right. on to it's clinging on a to, professional, to va- valuable praise That's thing. That's true. Man. Or businesswoman, or businesswoman. Please. What, what was your not comedy? I I was an engineer first. Oh. I I became an engineer. Oh shoot! When it, if you ask me when I was in ten, what are you gonna be? I told the engineer. My parents convinced me I would be an engineer, oh. and I became an engineer, and I did engineering for years. And so I was you like, worked as an engineer for, for in America for three years. In America, yeah, yeah. Bro, what brought you here? I grew up here. Well, okay, so you. So you I grew left up in London on, from when I was six. Yeah, I went. To, I moved to London, Ontario. I grew up in London, Ontario. Yeah. Then I went to Waterloo for school. Okay. Five years. And then, then you I got moved a job to America. In the yes, in Detroit in the automotive industry oh, for two Detroit? years. So but then cool. I went to San what? Francisco for a year in the startup like Silicon Valley. Oh, fun. So two years there, one year there, and just hated it all. But you like, hated every second of it. No, I didn't. I, I didn't hate it, but it just but wasn't it the right authentic. thing. It felt I had an angst. Yeah, there was yeah, something yeah, wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I got a nice car in a nice place. And once that wore off, after like a year, yeah. I just started ha- having these feelings. And then you just know, as a creative, you just know. I was that's always the scary this person. Part. You can't. You can never run away from it. Exactly. It always chases you, and that's that's the scary part. Like people are like, oh, like you're so lucky to be an artist. Like, yeah, it's wonderful, but then if you ignore it, it's gonna freaking chase you down. Yeah. So that's how people get substance addiction. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Because like, we try to numb that that you know that inkling that you were talking about. I think there was one quote. I don't know if it was like fucking like some old like Winston Churchill or some shit. It was like Probably. nothing <laughs> is worse than or, or there's nothing more insufferable than living with someone who can't pursue their passion. Yeah. Like someone who's got a passion for something or like a secret talent that they can't pursue, that is a person who's toxic to be around. That's right. You know? Because then, I think because then that person's never able to be fully present with you. Because when when you're with someone who's completely fulfilled, completely autonomous, completely living a life that's authentic to them, they suddenly have all of this room to just like, they feel good about everything outside of you to be there with you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's why, like, when, when, like, for example, like, if, if you're with a partner who's, like, super passionate about whatever it is, comedy or whatever, it, even if they have a job, it's like you got to give them room to, to engage with that part of themselves because otherwise it's, they're not going to hate you. They're going to end up hating themselves. And you can never, like, you're never going to be happy in a relationship with someone who doesn't like themselves. Of course. Yeah. You got to love yourself before you can love anyone else. Totally. I think Winston Churchill also said that. Or yeah, maybe probably. it was Jabril. <laughs> <Maybe> it's <laughs> one of those two. I <laughs> always mix Jibreel. up Winston Churchill yeah. and the angel Jabril. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I did it for three years. But in year two of it, started doing yeah. open mics. And I was like, oh my Ooh. God, this is my thing. I was always obsessed. Yeah. My mom is so religious. Is my she? dad is so religious. Whoa. So when I grew up, Eve, I remember when I grew up, I would be watching Arthur on TV. And Arthur's dad would kiss... Uh, his mom as he left the house. Bye, honey. My mom would come in. What are you watching? Huh? Did she know? But they're married. And it's a cartoon. It's and- a, on TVO Kids. It's a kids <laughs> cartoon. You know what I mean? So like that was oh the level. My God. So so, you, yeah. so I could always watch stand up because my mom's uh, English wasn't that good at the time. Oh, so she it's didn't just a know guy with a microphone. Offended, yeah? It's just a guy with a microphone. <laughs> they just don't want to see kissing, sex, affection, any of that stuff. Violence was okay. It's your funny parents, how violence Your is. parents were hired by NBC too. Yeah, yeah, to, there you go. To, there to you filter go. your life. There you go. And uh, so I could, I always got away with stand up. I was always the class clown, all that shit, blah, 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 blah. And then just was just convinced myself, like I was always this exact person. Yes. But I was like, <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, engineer. I'll be an engineer. I'm, yeah. I'm going to be an engineer. And then I was. And yeah. then it did not work out for me. But I did it. So I could just tell my parents, hey, I did the thing you wanted. Just. Leave me alone for now, okay? Just like I did the thing. I did, the, I did the I thing, did. and and it didn't work. So just that's enough. Exactly, I got that's the degree, and I did you. the thing. <laughs> Come on, leave me be. And then yeah. life has been just so much, so much better ever since. I actually yeah. feel like I saved my life. I know exactly what you mean. I know. Can I tell you some similar, similar story? Please. Because actually, so, we're out of time. No, I'm oh, oh no, my gosh, and we're not been? recording. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh God! Okay, okay. Everything's going to Jimmy! shit. Okay. I, fe- I feel like you're gonna listen back to this this uh, audio and it's just gonna be like distortion all the time because I like, talk so loud. No, I kept your gain low. Oh, okay, because that's good. That's you're good. Like, so happy to be here. I'm like, I'm gonna keep her gain low. <laughs> Let's <laughs> like, not deafen here. our okay, audience. Okay, all right. I'm gonna drop that to three. Uh, uh, all, like my whole life, thankfully, thankfully, I've had this space to be a musician. But it's hard. It's hard. Like, like you know, Ari Shafir. You know Ari Shafir. Oh, right? a huge fan. Yeah. So Ari Shafir was talking about comedy. I think this applies to music too. He's saying like, it's just like imagine like just 10, 20 years of just like constantly freaking swimming and you're getting no- nothing. 
like no reward for your work until one day it just clicks, you know? And and he's like, it's it, the people who make it are the people who stick with it. The people who make it are the people who outlast the other people. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And so And so for a while, you know, like after The Voice especially, I felt extreme, extreme burnout. Okay, so The Voice. The Voice. Yeah, okay, let's, let's talk about that and then I'll get to the thing like afterwards. So The Voice, uh, the way it happened was, um, I don't know, it was so random, man. Like I just, I got a message from somebody uh, who said like, hey, so like the voice Middle East. I'm from like, The Voice. It's well, like, she wasn't you? actually. She said, hey, like they're they're taking auditions. Here's the number of the guy. I, I in Cairo. In Lebanon. Okay. And and she's like, you know, like uh, I I don't have any. Like, she doesn't have any connection with them or anything. She she just said like, you know, one of their uh, whatever reps messaged me and asked me if I know anybody in Canada who would like to audition. And so, you know, I sent them a little like phone recording audition. And then I get a phone call at like seven in the morning from this woman speaking Arabic, an ang- like an Arabic I don't understand. Because I had never, even though I lived in Egypt for the first 16 years of my life, I'd never been exposed to Lebanese Arabic, oh, Syrian yeah. Arabic, like none of that. And so she's like talking in Arabic, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm sorry, can you speak to me in English? And she's like, yes, I am. I forget her name from The Voice. Uh, we want to whatever schedule, uh, you know, uh, we want you to come to Lebanon for for an in-person audition. I was like, what? Like, I never imagined that. Isn't that so that funny, by like, the way, where I just, the other day I was talking to a pharmacist and yeah. she, my brother's pharmacist, I was picking up medicine for him. And she's like, oh, you're Kareem's brother. I'm like, yeah, salam. Oh, that, and then she started going so hard at quick Arabic. Like, she's like, oh, he knows like, Arabic. And then I was like, oh, fuck, go back, go back, go back. I know Arabic, that. but go back, go yeah. back. I don't know it that well. Like, fuck. Like, you got too comfortable. It's true. They, they, they I mean, they assume, I think they assume that, that because if you speak Arabic, it's like, oh, it's speak all of oh, Habibi, okay, I'm like, oh, okay, go back to English, please. I, I, I speak Arabic like six years out of my life, lady, yeah. not, not the rest of it. Um, and so, you know, they asked me to like come to Lebanon. And at that point in my life, like, I was working as a music teacher and, you know, I was just kind of doing my music thing, but like not large scale at all. Like I was just kind of doing my thing. And um, and they told me, like, you you want to come to Lebanon? And and I had to, like because most of their, you know, the people that they're auditioning are from the Middle East. So to them, it's like they just take like whatever, two hundred dollar plane. But I was like, OK, so I have to decide if I'm going to like quit my job and like spend like almost two grand on a ticket to just go for literally two days and then come back. You know, because that's the audition. And so I was like, you know, what, fuck it. Like, I'm not I'm not going to get this. Op- I mean, I might get another opportunity, but I'm not going to depend on that. I was like, whatever. This is in front of me right now. And so I uh, I quit my job. I bought the ticket. I went there. I landed. Uh, I landed at night. The next day I woke up, I did my audition and then I went to sleep. And then the day after that, I flew back like it was bam, bam, bam. Wow. And yeah, and, and I just waited. I waited for two weeks to hear back to see if they wanted because the blind audition is like They've already filtered most of the, you know, most of the the applicants at that point. Yeah. And so I went for just like a, in like a small little room, you know, with, you know, some of the producers and, and stuff. How, how was the vibe in that room? They were all super nice, yeah. you know, like. Did I it mean, feel it, corporate though? It did feel corporate. Obviously, like it's, it's a huge show. It's so much money is being thrown at that show. So yeah. like, they have to be efficient. They have to be, uh, they have to make sure that everything is like just so. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I, I sang to them and, and then I went home and I just waited. Man, it's so I scary. I just pictured singing to someone with a clipboard. Just like, hmm, okay. Yeah. You're like, ah! Like, it's, oh. it, it is kind of, you're doing a little <laughs> monkey like dance. Hmm, okay, you're you're yeah. singing your solo out and they're arm, just like. Arm went out when she sang hard. Good. <laughs> good. She did pre-chorus. pre-chorus. Good. <laughs> she did, pre-co- she did yeah. vibrato. She yeah. vibrated. Mashallah, she? vibrato. <laughs> Rahib. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so you're just waiting. I'm just waiting. Just like, yeah. please don't have that being That's a wasted right. plane ticket. Exactly. And then, but I'm, I'm, I'm known, like I, I always do shit like that. I just kind of like. I, I take massive risks. I don't know if I if I can continue doing. But that wait, for a long here's time. the question: If it was only two days, why would you have to quit your job? <laughs> You're like, I hated the uh, job. <laughs> let me think. Why did I think there was? Why did I have to quit my job? They're like, hey, you know, you can just take think, two I days off. I think off. I quit my job. Like, yeah, pre- I think I quit. Okay, okay. I think I quit my job <laughs> thinking that I would hear back right away. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and, okay, okay. And that wasn't the case. And I mean, I'm I'm glad I ended up doing that anyway. Cause it was it the was, move. It was the move. Okay. Uh, 
But they call me back two weeks later. They're like, we want you to come in for a blind audition. And I was like, well, I don't have another $2,000 to spend on a ticket. And they're like, it's all right. We got everything from here. Oh, and hell so, yeah. You're like, yeah, oh, man, thank God. That was pretty nice to not having to spend a cent for three months. That was pretty amazing. So what happened? So I, I got there. I did the blind audition. It was freaking magical. Samita Saeed was my coach. She's an absolute gem of a human being. Like, you know how they say don't meet your heroes? If you're a hero, Samita Saeed, meet her. She's amazing. Samita Saeed. She's yeah, she Lubnani did the, or what? Yeah. No? Baby, I used to dream about you. Yeah, it was it was like the biggest hit in like the, anyway. So yeah. Well, shout out to her. She's so, was it Samira? Samira said, Man, one day I'm gonna meet her again and it's gonna be amazing. Um love it. She was so sweet to me. And so I got to the battles and and like there was like another curly haired girl in the battles. She was like taller than me, had like very long hair. Is that is it is it like there's room for one curly haired girl? I think that's kind of what it was. That's also, so this is the T V portion of it, by the way. This is the uh there's probably like one like dark girl. Yeah. There's one curly haired <laughs> girl. Right. They called the curl they hashtagged it the curly battle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was yeah. just you versus her. It was just me versus her. And you and said she was taller. Does is this height? Isn't that an advantage? No, singing? but like you know, she like like I was entering in as this like little five foot three person, and so yeah. I, was, I, I did it, like I look back on the thing and like I sang my heart out, did everything, but a, a part of me did feel a little bit intimidated because she was Lebanese too, and so I and was, it was there, and it was there. So that's so her in home my, game, exactly. Yeah. So and she brought she brought out like all her friends to yeah, cheer yeah, for her course. in the audience. And so, yeah, like a little bee was a little bit psyched out. Um, and so, and so I just went home and that was really hard on me, uh, to go home, but everything, like just the entire experience was incredible because up until then, like, I mean, I don't know if you ever experienced this as an immigrant. I mean, you came here pretty young, so maybe not, but I was like, I came here and I was like, new home, new me. I'm not Egyptian. I'm Canadian. People would ask me where I'm from. I'd say Ottawa, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, and then and, they go, well, where are you from? From Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. but, yeah. Malika, look at me in there. Malika, okay. Wait, wait. Yeah. That, that does not sound yeah. like a yeah. like a last name Smith situation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've never heard someone from Ottawa speak so much about Jibril. Exactly. Like, what the, <laughs> she keeps talking about this Who's angel. This <laughs> Jibril you keep talking <laughs> yeah. about. <laughs> and um and but then when I went there, I kept you know, I was surrounded by all of these like Egyptians, Tunisians, Syrians, like Algerians, Lebanese people who are like young, young, you know, adults who were Passionate. Very passionate, open-minded, talented, and 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 funny, and like I just wanted to be around them. It was an amazing vibe. Yeah, and they made me feel like family, and I think that was the biggest that was the biggest takeaway for me. And so I was like, man, I'm one of these people, you know. I'm 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 Arab, I'm Middle Eastern, I'm you know I'm I identify with these are the people that I was waiting to meet my whole life. In I Egypt. love that. Yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, man, I'm I'm, I'm fucking Egyptian. I'm fucking I'm Middle Eastern. I'm an immigrant. I'm Canadian too, and I don't have to pick. I'm both. You know, and I'm pr I'm proud of I'm proud of the parts of me that I got from from my Arabness, from my Middle Easternness that I'm able to then that are making me a better Canadian today. You know, because I'm I, I consider myself a very giving, generous person, and I get that from from home. You know, from from home number one. You know? Yeah, like just the custom, like it's customary yeah, to be giving, to be right. hospitable, to be hospitable. That's yes, on a different level. Yes, you know, and like and like on, like there's a lot of things even like that I that I um that I got from from being a, like like growing up Muslim for example like I used to think that like okay like yes you know I I have Muslim heritage but it doesn't define me like you know it's it's really hard to to kind of create that separation in your head because like you don't think about oh I'm Muslim when you grow up in the Middle East it's like you just are everybody you are. is default yeah you default yeah but then when you're here it's like okay what does that mean to me and then exactly. I, I think about things like man like there's a lot of things that I got from my Muslim heritage that have made me a good person that have made me the person that I am today I'm so proud of that you know and it's like it doesn't matter what you do with it after it's a part of you it's a part of you you know when when you grow up and it's important to like pay respect to where you came from you know not in a way where it it, it controls you but in a way where you just you know what parts of you that you respect that you appreciate came from there you know i love that i spent 20 years trying to be as canadian as possible <laughs> yeah just trying to be like i used to tell people like well if i had to speak arabi with my mom or someone if i had to take a call i would make sure none of my yeah canadian white friends were around i did not want to speak arabic in front of them yeah i had it in my head i just when you're young and you come here and you try to survive you're like okay i'm black okay i listen to tupac 
okay, yeah, that's what I am. <laughs> oh, I just want to fit in. I'm not this. I'm not that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just trying to be in this thing that I was like, if I'm just as much as them, then I'm not different. Then you're trying to make it so it's like me in Sudan. Like, I'm trying to make it so it's like I just stick in with these guys. And it's like, I won't be different. It's like, I don't want to stick out. I don't want to be. And then I was like, fuck all this stuff. Let me just follow my passion, try to like follow this dream. And then when I got into comedy fully and like everything I do, that is what I, that is what I am. I realized that's what I am. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that is most of my comedy surrounded that. It's like, I lead with that now. Yeah. It's like, this is who I am. That's this is right. what I've been running from. This is in reality. It's like, I've had this like crazy Sudani house that I've been like, Trying to be like, ah, oh, I'm just like you guys outside and inside. We're like reading Quran. Quran is blasting. Yeah. The hood is like crazy. <laughs> People are coming to my house. Like, is your house on fire, bro? No, 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 man. It's good, bro. What do we have to do? We play basketball. Sense. Let's go play basketball. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You know what I mean? Like, like. No, you can't come over. No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. Oh, bro, I, people used to be like, yo, you you cannot go to Abbas's house. You can't. Go. I, I, I come outside real quick. Quran, just I'm gonna be blasting so everything. Like, like that's the my actual life yeah. and. Only when I really leaned into it and fully embraced like this new path that is like who I am, that it's like it's all coming to light. And it's letting me be comfortable and I can actually own this shit. And that's it just right. feels right to own it and be authentic rather than yes. be like and it does make you feel more Canadian because that's what it, Canada exactly. is. Exactly. And and when you're doing the other thing where you're running away from who you are, then you're you are you're not a loss. Like, you're, you're, you're lost. lost. You don't like yourself. You're just denying exactly. You're you living a like fucking yourself. like uh, mm -hmm. conundrum. You're living. You're living like mm -hmm. you're in strife internally. Yeah. Like it's just like there's a battle inside. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, no, everything's good. I love Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons is yeah. the best. Even yeah. though, man, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't like Tim Hortons coffee. I just had Tim Hortons coffee. I mean, it's not I mean, the best. But I like hey, their lattes. It's everywhere. I'll, I'll That's do a what latte it is. from Tim Hortons. It's everywhere. But they it's got, everywhere. Yes. It's a it's a bathroom you could rely on on the road. And when I use the bathroom, I'll support the business. Exactly. I'll get a two milk, one sugar, medium, please, ma'am. And uh, everything bagel, toasted, and buttered. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll be on my way. As soon as they introduced oat milk into their, like, mm, you know, milk uh, menu, I'm, I'm so pro Tim Hortons now. Oh, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I hate oat milk. I love, what? Fuck it's so, it's I so, hate like, milk. creamy and, like, oh, nutty and get amazing. Out of here. No, 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 no. I want milk. milk. I just want regular milk. Oh, come on, man. Forget Wait, about we're not that. even supposed to be drinking milk as I know, adults. I know. Okay? Oh, my God. So actually, this biologically, you're back. making a mistake. I had a guy, Daniel Budum. I still remember Romanian. He was this engineer. This was a problem. When I went to Detroit, I worked in an office. Yeah. I'm 23, newly okay. graduated. And I'm a pro I get a job as a program manager, which is way over what I should get a job, but I got hooked up. And everybody's up. like in their thirties. Everyone's in their average age forty five. They're That's all men. Nuts. They're all fathers. And the conversation for two years was how to finish a basement. Okay. Wow. Like so I know how to finish a basement. I right. mean, make no mistake. <laughs> That's the one thing you got. But like there's one guy I worked with who's like the freaking guy who just loved to tell you, who'd love to tell you shit like that. Like you're you're still drinking milk. You know, after three years old, the, the the humans we don't need milk. We don't need this. We don't need that. You you you're eating meat still. Oh, did, 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 did. shut Wait, up, Daniel. He was Daniel. a vegetarian. Fuck okay, no, he was I everything. Can't, I can't. He, came he was in, everything. He, he was came, all of the world. He came in terms. to the staff room one time, and I was getting ice, and I was putting something in. And he goes, "Are you putting in ice?" I'm like, "Bro, don't start with ice. Don't, no, not ice. You bro. took milk from me. You <laughs> took meat from me. Don't, don't start take with ice. ice. <laughs> don't start with ice. I'm not. I'm out of here, bro. Don't fucking start with ice. Okay, <laughs> fuck." But like, there's always that person that's like, they're like, ah, I don't like what I do, so I'm gonna go fully lean into like health and something like that. He's just like, I'm happy doing this. Ugh, but it's did like, he did he look amazing? He had like, no, he was like, I mean, his like, body was good. His okay. face was fucked. That's probably why he focused so <laughs> he much would, on the health shit. I, he's like, listen, I can't have the face. I, I don't know have what the body. Yeah, he would. He's the only man I've ever known till this day who would show me pictures of himself in his twenties. Look at how look at how I was. Listen, I would, That's really the, weird. He would always show. He was like 48, 46, and he would always show me pictures. Like, I used to fucking kill it, man. Look oh. look at me. Look at me. That's me at 24. What's his name, Alex? Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. Sorry. See, it's not even memorable. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, to be honest, I love the guy, man. He's a, at, at the core of it, he's a fucking great I, I'm guy. I'm sure he's a great but guy. But, like, he fucking had all these, like, displacements of emotion into weird things. Ice? Get the fuck off. But like, <laughs> I don't miss that corporate shit at all. And and we were talking about how I felt like uh, I saved my life, you yes, know? And you are yes. saying that. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. So like, I, I used to, 
So I used to run a, a matchmaking department in a dating company. That was. Astaghfirullah. I know it's so hard. I hope it was Muslim Muslim uh, Minder. See, no, we we were we were so the other direction. We were like we are not allowed. We're not allowed to set people up based on religion or ethnicity. Okay. Only yeah. based on like shared like goals and like whether or not they're actually compatible humans. Mm-hmm. And I know that sounds horrible. That's devil's work. That's by the devil's way. work. Yeah. But I actually set up uh, you know uh, a few couples and one of them I even got in touch with them a year later and they're like yeah things are great we're moving. That's so together. funny. You're like, hey, just checking up on how the relationship. Yeah, is. just checking up on the relationship you paid for. <laughs> like, like everyone who gets married that you set up, you have weird pictures of their like at, in it's your just house. Like in my house. I set them up. I set them up. <laughs> like what the fuck? That's so weird. It's actually honestly when it when it works out, it's really rewarding. I'm sure. I'm sure. It's it very I'm just messing around. And what I really liked about it is that it's like okay, it's like a real job. You know, it's not music. It's not like oh gig by gig. It's it's a real job, and it relies on like emotional intelligence, which is something I value very much, and it's something that I that I want to continue to like develop in myself and so I'm like this job's perfect and I ignored music I completely ignored music for like a year and I felt like I was dying not because there was anything wrong with the job like the job itself it's a great job it has nothing to do with the job exactly. just like engineering is exactly. a great job these are, I always say that these were fine career yeah. these were great people who a lot of them were like I met people that were how I am with comedy they loved what they were doing they loved it and I'm like this office should only be filled with people like you exactly it's just like when it's like, you know, with wood, they say you sand with the grain. And when yeah. you sand against the grain, it's like rough. Yeah. It fucks it up. Exactly. That, when you're living your life against the grain, that's what it is. The, you there's get nothing sick. wrong you with get the job. You sick. Exactly. I used to be sweating. I used to be in an environment that would make my anxiety. Sp- I would be sweating. A sweaty mess. Yeah. I would go into these meetings being like, oh my God, I'm going to shake hands. I'm going to shake hands. <laughs> I'm going to shake hands. I'm going to shake hands. I have no, I'm in over my head. This is not where yeah. I should be. And my body is telling me. Yeah. Your body's like, that's what anxiety and sweat is. Your body's alarm. Like your, in- your environment is something you should not be ingesting. Exit this environment. That's right. But you can't. You, this is you've accepted. You're just the, you're you've here. Signed on the dotted line. Yeah. You get the salary. Now you've you must be. You've been making this investment for too long. So how can you liquidate it now? That'd so be so crazy. What, so what happened with? Was this after Carlton, by the way? First this was, job. Yeah, way after Carlton. This was. I was in Toronto at this point, and it was it was mid pandemic. So like I I got this. I got a job as like a. I hosted dating events online for them, which was so fun. I still do that, by the way. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, I feel like you got that personality. Thanks. Yeah. I, I really enjoy hosting events. You got like, that low gain personality. That low gain, that's right. <laughs> We're slower the mics for for Malika. <laughs> M- Malika. Yeah. Um. And and I I still enjoy. I love I love hosting events. I find that so fun. Um. And so you know, uh, she was like, "Would you like to you know take over the matchmaking department?" And it went really really well for a while, you know. But then it got to a point where I was just very aware at, at I was very aware of how how little with the authentic part of myself I was engaging in. And I just had to be honest, you know, with, with her. And I said, you know, I think, I think it's time that you find somebody to replace me. And literally, like, as soon as I handed things over to the new person, who's doing amazing now, by the way, she's really? awesome. Yeah, I, I have only good things to say about the company and about, and about the people that work there. As soon as I handed things over, and I started doing my own thing. I started streaming on Twitch, which is, which is now, like, a big part of my life. I love it. Uh, I wasn't making any more money than I had made with the company, but I just felt so right. Much better. Yeah, so much better. Yeah. And I like I wake up and I'm like, it's the first day of the rest of my life. Like, I'm so excited. I, I feel okay. And yo, like I still have days where I wake up and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Oh my I God. Know. You know? Because there's no roadmap. There's no playbook. There's no, playbook. no roadmap. Yeah. That's right. What? And it's a thing where like you 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 just you're swimming, 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 and like you you don't necessarily get feedback or like rewarded right away and it's really hard you know but but at the very least i know i will never die and or i won't be on my deathbed and say like i should have the biggest thing i fear in my whole life is regret same that's the biggest thing I fear. Yeah. Regret like, and like being alone. Yeah. I don't like being alone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Can you yeah. tell? You, you're like regret and the dark. Definitely yeah. the, dark. <laughs> the dark. I do. I have a lot of nightlights <laughs> at the house. I am. The boogeyman is real as fuck. He lives under my bed. He's real as debris, baby. That's a fact. <laughs> He's real as debris. <laughs> That's real as debris, baby. That's a fact. We're taking questions. We're on the call now. Uh, <laughs> so what do you do on Twitch? You stream on Twitch? I stream. Yeah. So you, you like know you the platform. Twitch? Right? I, know, I know Twitch. Yeah. yeah. So I know whenever I say Twitch, people are like, wait, like, so you game? And I'm like, nah. 
I, I stream music and it has like it has a um, like and people can donate right they can donate yeah. they can subscribe for certain perks on the yeah. channel um, they can uh, they can like uh, cheer uh, like digital uh, this I can digital just... currency but not crypto like yeah. like uh, like twitch itself has like it's like own tokens that you can like you can like exchange for real money that's right I love it you just see your mom being like ah. كيف ملك؟ اوه الحمد لله يعني شيء تويتشنج في ستريمنج في تويتش الحمد لله والله ما شاء الله ما شاء الله عليه ستريمنج فيري ماني فيورز بتغني في التويتش ماي بور ماذر مان شيز هاندلد سو ماتش شيت اون ماي بيهاف ماي مام ماي مام از لايك يو ود ثينك لايك يو نو ام ايجيبشن دات ماي مام وود بي لايك ذات نو شيز لايك ماي مام از ليفينغ هير بيست لايف باي ذا واي لايك شي جست غوت ماريد لايك ام سو هابي فور هير بات ماي مام ماي مام از اولويز سبورتد سبورتد مي بيينغ مي You I know? love it. Yeah, and like in in a she's world, pretty liberal, pretty liberal, she's like Muslim. Super liberal, like you know, she's. I wouldn't even say liberal. She's just she's just down to earth, man. Like she knows she knows what it really takes to be happy in life. It's not abide by these, you know, abide by every single tradition that you grew up with because that's the only thing that we know. Like it's it's. She's not like that. She's like, what is gonna make you happy? Okay, you don't know. Sit and fucking figure it out. Okay, you figured it out. Then go do it, and don't come complain to me that you're not happy because you know what you need to do to be happy. So go fucking do it. I love that. My mom's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> by the book, like I've never seen it. Like, like the other day I come home, she's like, uh, drink zam zam water, please drink, drink, oh, like drink the zam zam. And I, st- I'm like, come on, mom, I'm not thirsty. She's like, drink. And I start drinking it. She goes, Billyamin, oh. drink with your right hand. What <laughs> are you <laughs> doing? Shaitan, bishrab maek. You drink with shemel. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what about? People, I know. Man. I told her. I'm like, I, I do a bit now. I'm like the left, the left arm that written off <laughs> by this, or as Islam calls it, the devil's Doesn't dick. Okay, what if, what <laughs> if, if you've know? lost an arm? You know, I know, I know. Then it's hard. then it's fine. It's just so funny. I I often wonder about Zamzam water. It's like, is it really from Zamzam? Like all these like friggin', they sell it in every fucking corner I was, store. I make a I make a joke about how it's just a Nestle bottle with a with, a, with jo- a label that looks like it's printed on HP it inkjet. It probably is. Uh, we, no. We're being lied to, man. It just tastes like water with a pit with a pinch of topsoil in there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's earthy. Mm, those are the blessings. I mm, never. Those are the, the blessings. I think. No, that's just <laughs> dirt. That's that's just dirt. <laughs> that's just fucking fertilizer. But. Uh, oh, that's so funny. But I mean, you know, it's your yeah. mom. I love my mom. And hey, uh, like, at the, she's coming around. She's coming around. She like she's very confused by my transition to uh, comedy because they don't get it. You know, my mom's old school, and they come here, immigrants. Mm-hmm. They want you to do something that's secure yeah. because they escaped the place, and all they know they want that's security right. for you. So mm-hmm. become a doctor, engineer, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. do these things. But my whole thing is like, I did it. Just yeah. I did it. I didn't like it. And so confused, like we don't understand. You can just. Like they're all like, why don't you just get an engineering job and do the thing at night? And yeah. I'm like, you only have so much life force, and you only have so you, much hours in a day, and so much energy. Like I used to do that for a solid year. I would go to the office every day, and go to the open mics every night. Like you must have been so exhausted, so tired. It's not even like that. You the hours thing. It's just the life force. You realize yeah. that you only have, even if you're at a job eight hours that you. Don't care about the job, but you got to do the job. Yeah, it takes something and out of you. And doing that job ex- drains life force, and then yeah. you're you're bringing less to the thing you really like. Mm-hmm. And I get it; you got to make money, blah blah blah. But it's like I can't do both, you know. I just yeah. can't do both. Yeah. And and you're like, you know, the money I'm not making any less money. I was, I'm making significantly less money. That's okay though. Signif- but it's like life is so much better, and it's it like I can't even explain it to people because I have so many friends that are like fobs too, and we're yeah, all yeah, like yeah, yeah, immigrants. Yeah. I cannot. I no matter how much I talk about passion and and, and fulfillment and all this stuff, there's no way I'll ever convince someone. To take a, a, an eighty percent pay cut, <laughs> like eighty percent, like eighty five percent, you know, I mean? there's the no thing, one. You're, but I'm you're... like, my life now is like, it's so much better. I can't even explain. You're it. the guy most people are gonna envy because what what the decision that you take to to really commit to yourself is so hard to do, and it takes a lot of guts and it takes a lot of like sacrifice. Like you're you're sacrificing a lot of security. You know, at the very least in the beginning when you're when you're, you know, building your brand and all that stuff. And it's like a lot of people wish they had the balls to do that. You know, it's so hard. Yeah, I definitely. And I get those messages all the time. And I left and I and on my YouTube channel, I did a video a couple years back during COVID called why I left engineering. And yeah. that was the one thing on my channel that constantly gets like a 
that's the one video that I constantly see resonating comments and yes. people like DM that's me on Instagram. That's a very attractive uh, title too. <laughs> and it wasn't even that. It was just yeah. like, I just kind of want to share it because a lot of people ask and just share the whole story. Yeah. It was like 10, 12 minutes, but like I still get DMs and comments and all the time like, bravo and like wow that inspired me and this and that and young engineers all the time who are in their first year where i was and where i didn't see these videos a lot of these first year civil engineer iraqis who are like they were the same thing as me you will become engineer and then they are and now they're in they did the degree it's a hard degree we did it and now we're in the job and we're just like I fuck, 35 everything. more years of this and then retirement that's that's my that's life what on this I earth. Have to look forward to it's interesting too because like Maybe 50 years ago, we didn't used to think like this. We we now, like our generation feels more entitled to fulfillment and to happiness than generations before us, you know? And that's the biggest thing that my parents did by coming to this country. That's why I feel so blessed. I feel, and that's why I really feel like I cannot just do engineering. Because that's right. I'm not, that's I'm right. not being true to myself. So Because you would have like, had a life back yeah, you know, yeah, then. Yeah. You would have had a life. It's like, if it's just about having a life, it's like, we might as well not immigrate. Exactly. You know, Just it's like, live. no, we, we want an eat. elevated, like we want the best parts of ourselves to be the parts that we get to express every day. That's why we immigrate. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And if we're talking about legacy too, like to solidify my parents' legacy even more in life, if we're even, even talking about legacy. Even if they don't know that that's Even if they doing. don't know, by to do it is following exactly what I want to do. That is really solidifying and almost legitimizing in a way, at least from my point of view. Like this whole tumultuous journey they did. Yeah, because they left everything. Because yeah, my dad, master's degree, MBA from Holland, here, doing driving cab for 20 years. Whoa. The same story. Like, That's And they crazy. don't even accept uh, European degrees when it's he came. It's insane. Like forget Sudani oh stuff. God. Like my dad has MBA from like Netherlands. They're like, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's actually insane. That's yeah. actually freaking nuts. So I had to it learn French just so he could do like translating on the oh side and God. like. It's like what 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 a waste of talent like what a waste of pure skill like your dad is so so amazing at what he does and Canada's just like oh just because this isn't done right here we're not going to use his amazing skills to to up our economy and to up our industry like that's so shit Yeah you're a 45 year old African with an accent ah uh, just ah uh. I you really know what I, mean? I mean I don't know what's being done to like to somehow like Canadianize people's like degrees and official you know documents or whatever but but we need to get a move on that cuz it's it's such a waste of absolute like skill and talent cuz my mom, my mom had the same thing happen to her America's way better for that Yeah I when I worked in America mm. I would be in Tennessee Tennessee has so many immigrants that come there who are engineers with me in this company. Like, I worked in Detroit in the sales engineering office. But yeah. the company, the manufacturing plant was outside Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. So when I would go there, there's 300 employees. There'd be Saudis who have their degrees, like, from, like, Jeddah and shit mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. And they got a master's from whatever. And they're here and they're doing the work and they're following up with suppliers. But they can still write emails just as well as anybody. Exactly. And they have an accent, but they're doing the job. Yeah. And I'm like, the fact that you're here... It blows my mind because in Canada you would never get hired. You yeah. would never join the team. Yeah. Because you just you. Canada you're, loves you're, to you're let people Canadian in enough. and look you at look at us Canada. Experience. But then they're like they don't really want to utilize people. No you know? man. They'll never hire you. Yeah. They'll never hire you. You gotta change your name. To, you gotta change your name just so you get the interview with the resume. Like I didn't even realize till much later mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. the reason. I was at wa at Waterloo. You got to do co-op program. And I remember I applied to 700 jobs oh in my, my first God. year and didn't get one interview. Oh, my God. 700. And it was like, I realize now after being in the job market, how HR does it, everything, everything. It's like just the name on your resume writes you off for so much stuff. That's right. They're like, ah. Uh, because you say Abbas Abdel Wahab. Mm -hmm. this is, that's my name, Abbas like it's, Abdel it's, Wahab. It's, it's too Muslim. It's too yeah, Arab. It's, we don't like uh, it. We don't like it. Yeah. They're looking for Johnny Chin. Yeah. Dave Smith. Dave Lee. Dave Lee. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jesse you know, Singh. But you know what I think is really awesome? Shout out to Jesse uh, <laughs> we, it's because uh, comedians are including stories like that in their comedy. And artists are like visual artists are including stories like that in their art. That I think that it's it's going to become it like there's going to be a shift, I think, because because. When it was happening to our parents, it was like, it's like, what? Wait, I'm sorry, what? Like, they were almost like surprised by this. But now everybody knows that this is how it goes and we don't like it. And that's that's why I even, I remember, man, I remember something that makes me like emotional. Yeah. Is uh, like when I was like 20, 21, I just remember, like my whole life, it was like comedy. Mm -hmm. My whole life, you know? 
They used to call me Chappelle, like in recess. I would just redo all of Chappelle's whole specials. I love that. Everything. I'm like redoing the Chappelle show. I'm like, they would gather around. I'd do the whole bit. Yeah. But uh, I remember when I was 20, 20 I, my, everything I think is comedy. Everything is comedy. I remember just writing, being like, man, I should start writing this stuff down and then having the thought, for what? Mm. And then just shutting that shot, that thought down right away. Like being like, what for what? You're an engineer, right? Why would you write down these funny ideas? What are you gonna do with these funny ideas? And then now I look back, I'm like, man, that was like my mind trying to like be like suppress you. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, wow, dude. And then like four years later, I'm like, did the thing, and I was like, okay, this is not for me. And then just I actually took I took the right direction, man. Mm -hmm. I really did, and it's like. I don't want to be like, oh, I was all this and that. Because luckily, I also got laid off. That was the best part. Because mm -hmm. when I got laid off, I was like, okay. I quick, I got laid off and I have this expensive lease. And, I, and I'm renting a bedroom in a four-bedroom house in San Francisco for $1,600 a month. Oh, my God, a bedroom. It's, yeah, in a four-bedroom house. It's, San Francisco is more expensive than Manhattan. And I'm just like, I got laid off. I'm like, oh, fuck, I need to find another job. I need to find another job. And I started applying quick, 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 quick. And then I'm already doing comedy for a year right now. But then I was like wait a minute, mm -hmm. this is like God putting this fucking thing in my lap. Like, go back to Canada and just become a comic, dude. Forget about the visa living here. You're, 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 you're job free. It's done. The yeah. hardest part was quitting the job. You were never going to quit. I was never going to walk away from all That's that right. money to and do so open mics. the universe just like sent it, it to you. Yeah, like, you're, here's you're the out. thing you couldn't do yourself. So I was like, the rest fuck is up it. to you. Exactly. Fuck it. I'm going back home. And yeah. next time I come back into America, I'm going to come back as an entertainer. Yeah. Not as an engineer. Yeah, man. Love that. That's that's a Seven nice note ago. to yeah. yeah, I really yeah. like that. And hopefully I'm look I'm planning on being in New York this time next year. <gasps> like to live? Live. Oh, cool. Yeah. Salma's there. Salma's there. I'm actually I got she linked me up with her uh immigration lawyer. Nice. Yeah. Yo, dude. Yeah. I want to be in New York soon. I haven't I don't have plans. I'll link you up with her immigration lawyer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that would be uh that would be wild, man. Well, I guess we'll we'll have another episode next year in New York. In New York, yeah. yo, okay. I do a couple of questions at the end of the yes, podcast. Yes. Okay, we're talking uh, just because it's the immigrant section. And at one point, someone was like, "Bro, you should do with podcasts. You gotta have like a freaking like a closer. Not even a closer, but you gotta have a thing. You know, okay, everything. What's your yeah. thing? So I was like, okay, let me start doing these three questions. Okay. Okay. okay immigrant okay. section. What am I gonna ask? Okay. Number one, I'm gonna ask, did you get beat growing up? <laughs> I got, I got, I got like wrist slaps. I did not get beat. I, I'm, I skipped the beating. Did thankfully. you have cousins around you getting it way worse? Thankfully, that was not a part of our family culture. But I do know a few people, like lots of people, who did experience that. So. Do you have brothers? I have one brother. Oh yeah. Did okay, he get you know, his ass yo, beat? I, I got beat. By my brother, not by my parents. Man, my brother beat me up so much. It was so bad. Because here's the thing. He was a very, like, quiet guy. And I was a very, like, annoying, loud person. A squid. A squid. <laughs> yeah. And so if, if he was annoyed with me, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't express, can you just fucking go away? And even if he did, I wouldn't go away. And so he just beat me. <laughs> we have a good relationship now. But we, we were not friends as kids. <laughs> that's so funny. That's, that's just the sibling dysfunction. That's, like... That we crosses the borders of, of race and I feel so everything. bad, man. Because because I would be able to like get away with things, you know. Oh, of because course. I would just I would just say things and then you know You're he girl. can't that's right. Yeah. But not only that, because I, I wouldn't I can't beat him up. But then he would beat me up and then he would get in trouble. <laughs> but it was the only power he had because I was just this like annoying little brat. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the long answer to your question. I, I feel so, so, so bad. I feel wrong about that sometimes. When it's I all good it. now, though. Yeah, it's all good. We're, we're good friends now, thankfully. Okay. Um, what's some shit you've seen in Egypt that only Egyptians, only something that only Egyptians do? Like what's something like you only see it in Egypt or you only only Egyptians do this? I don't, I don't know what the word for this is, but the kind of like trying to bullshit your way out of everything. I'll give you an example. I was standing in line uh, at, at some government something in Egypt, and then this woman, she's like kind of standing outside the line, but she just kind of keeps inching closer as people keep leaving the line. And then it's finally my turn, and she steps in in front of me. I'm like, lady, it's not your turn. She's like, no, no, I've been here the whole time. And I'm like, no, you haven't. You were standing outside of line, then you came into line. She's like, "Well, I was in the line before, but then I had to leave to get something, and then I had, and now I'm back." And I'm like, "You can't just fucking like save your place in the line." And she was really believing in her own 
bullshit. It was crazy. That's an Egyptian thing, hands down. Yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> believe, believing your own bullshit. I think. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm sure I do it sometimes too, and I don't even notice. But like, yeah, believing your own your own bullshit is like Egyptian copyrighted, stamped, branded. Yeah. That's so fucking funny. You're like they're Egyptian as fuck. That's right. right. I was in London. I was. I was over there. That's what I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, the final one. What in Egypt? Who are who's like the butt of the jokes? And I've had a lot of Egyptians. The butt on. of the jokes. Yeah, and I get, uh, usually it's it's like like the farmers are the butt of the jokes, or the I heard or, Sudanese. Or the <laughs> Sudanese and the Saudi so, so, Saudis. Saudis. No, uh, uh, Saidis. Saidis. Said? It's, it's Said is like it's a, the, it's a it's a section of of Egypt. It's the like southern. you know yeah it's like farmlands and like you know there's like the they're more violent and the, yeah they're like you know the the men and then yeah. the the women are like working in the fields. I mean I'm sure it's like advanced since now, but like historically they've always been the butt of the jokes as if they're somehow less intelligent than the city people. Or well, something. what would they say like what would be like this guy said like, uh, okay so you know how how usually they'll be like oh like a uh, uh, whatever a, a something walks into a bar yeah it's usually like like our jokes would always start a Saidi walks into so a bar. Saidi walks into yeah. a bar. And like what? Do you know any Saidi jokes? I, I, I used to know so many, but yeah. I forgot them all. Because That's that so shit's mean, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> a Saidi walks into a bar and it says open. Yeah. And he walks away because he said, he think it's say closed because yeah. he can't read. <laughs> We're well, better than them. <laughs> it's like, Jesus. Exactly. It's so bad. But I, yeah, but I don't think, I don't think that's like a big part of the, the, the narrative now anymore. I think people have become a little nicer. Okay. Yeah. I love it. The whole world is actually going in that. I, the I like internet that. is making the I world really, yeah, a little I bit more accountable that. everywhere. You that's know? right. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's, I mean, it, with everything, there's like there's like pluses and minuses, right? So like, I think with this, like with the w- the internet making everybody accountable, it's making everybody accountable. But then it's making everybody a... all of a sudden, you know, t- accountable for things that they are not shouldn't be accountable for. I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 two things. You They're know? making people less racist, but They're at the less same racist. time, we are n- we know way too much yeah. about Will Smith and Jada's marriage. For I know. Some reason. Exactly. Did you see the recently? Jada says she never even wanted to marry Will. You're like, what? Well, that's what? so taking out of context. And like, I As feel, I feel like we're, we're we're looking for for ways to take people down now. Almost, there's like almost like we're we're looking for for reasons to cancel people, um, which I think is you know the one like downside of things. But then at the same time, it's really important that people be be aware that. You know, it's not okay to say certain things sometimes, you know? What do you think about the slap before we wrap this up? What okay, do you guys so say about the slap? I, I went through a journey with the slap, okay? I love so it. Like, er, even though it, this happened like two weeks ago. Though, you're like, no, emotionally, I, I this went is, through a freaking journey. I've toiled. So, so my immediate reaction was like, I've never been more attracted to Will Smith. Like, oh my God, look at him standing up for his woman. That was my like knee jerk reaction. And then, and then I, like, you know, like I, I thought about it and like I, I talked to like my friends, I talked to my partner. And I'm like, Okay, actually, hang on. Like, this is this is Chris Rock was in like a super vulnerable position, you know. Like, he sees Will Smith approaching him, and he's like, "Here's someone I trust. I'll be okay." And then he fucking punches him, and that's not okay. I understand where Will Smith was coming from in terms of defending the honor of his woman, but that was not the way to do it. And I listened to like something Tom Segura said, and um, and he said, you know, it was an attack on comedy, like to some extent. And it's like people need to. If if we're gonna be able to really make jokes and to really like, like just freely express ourselves as comics, you know, um, every everything needs to be, you know, because jokes have to be about something, you know. It's like where's the line? If if we're gonna be drawing lines, then the line's subjective. The li- there's never a line. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think, I think that. Uh, uh, could Chris Rock have been more sensitive? Probably, but did it warrant a punch in the face? Probably not. Okay, I like that. That's, that's like a I comprehensive. Think. That's like a very well yeah. thought Yeah, because you, you got to think about all sides. You know, it's yeah. not like oh that asshole punched him or oh that asshole made a joke about his wife. Like she's struggling through something. It's like it's not that binary. Everybody's going through their own experience, and having thought about everybody's experience, that's where I'm at. Yeah. I'd... Yeah. What do you think about it? Well, I just see my like one of my comedian idols up there getting slapped. Like after he was like, "This is this is the job. The job yeah. is to make fun. Like exactly. this is the job. Like especially Ricky Gervais has set the tone of like roasting everyone. It's like, yo, this is I a don't throwaway think Ricky joke. Gervais would have gotten punched. You know, he wouldn't have. Of course not, because he would have attacked everybody. Like and like, then it becomes this like. I I just don't see Will Smith going up in it because then. 
what's Ricky could literally would like press charges on Will Smith. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And I mean, Chris but there's Rock something could about, probably too, but he's probably but he wouldn't. Not but gonna. he probably exactly. wouldn't. It's like, like a black. There's just too much trust. But then at the them. same time, it's also like, dude, you fucking slapped. He's like a black. It's black on black crime on TV at this time, and Will Smith laughed, looks at Jada, she's like, and then he's like, oh, he's getting slapped. Like it's like. Guy, what the fuck is going on with this? I also, like, I mean, I don't know how she feels about it, but I don't think maybe she was, like, happy with how he handled it either. Hell no. You know? That's embarrassing for her. Like, yeah. he, keep your mom. And he's just like, I just want to see, I just, now more than ever, I want to go see Chris Rock live. Yeah, man. And hoping Yo, he addresses he's gonna it. He'll sell address it. Out. He did. He sold out, like, everything. I wonder if That's why did. people were like, is oh, it staged? I'm like, I was it's just, not, I was it's just not about to say, do you think it's staged? Imagine they were like, so I'll come up, it and will I'll be televised nationally, and I'm going to slap you in the face, and I'm going to walk away. That's right. I, 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 yeah. And then you'll your sales will increase. And Chris yeah. like, okay, you know what I mean? Like, That's a really fuck, fucked up way to no, go No, there's by. no way you'll be like, yeah, you're going to yeah, slap yeah. me, an adult male with children, yeah. on TV. Yeah. No, that's not going to happen. Fuck that shit. But anyways... Anyway. I'm happy we ended Yo, on that. I really enjoyed this. This was so wonderful. Thank this you was so awesome. Much. This flew by. Yeah, man. Has Yo, been please an hour? look. Yo, it's been an hour and a half. Yo, no, that's including the fuck up earlier. Right. <laughs> look into the camera. Tell the people where they can find you. Oh, you guys can find me everywhere. Uh, you can find me everywhere as Malaika Music, M-A-L-A-Y-K-A Music, Instagram, uh, TikTok, although I never post there. I just use it to consume content. Uh, Facebook. Uh, and Twitch, that is where I hang out most of the time. If you guys would like to actually hang out with me and like chat with me and watch me uh, sing to you live and have me serenade you on your work days, that's kind of where where I'm at all the time. So come find me on Twitch. Um, and we've got a beautiful online community that we hang out with every week. So join in the fun. Hell yes. Now that is awesome. As always, scroll below. All her details are in the description. From my end, thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you for you watching. Guys. Thank you for coming out, Maleka. This was beautiful. So I pre- this was such a good conversation. Yeah. Support the show. Keep watching. Check out patreon.com slash the immigrant section. And thank you for tuning in. Until next time, it's your boy, Baswa Ab and Maleka signing Bye. out. Peace. Woo.